In the last video, we saw that linear scaling relations exist between the adsorption energies of similar intermediates. So say for the intermediates associated with ammonia synthesis, N, NH, and NH2, we could plot the adsorption energies of NH and NH2 as a function of the adsorption energy of nitrogen. So now what if we're interested in the transition state energy that connect these intermediates? So say for example, the transition state energy for going from NH star to NH2 star. So clearly the transition state on the molecular level looks something like NH star and something like NH2 star. It's therefore reasonable to think that its energy is going to be correlated with the energy of these intermediates and therefore the energy of our descriptor variable, the adsorption energy of nitrogen. In 1928, Bronsted first suggested a relationship between reaction energies and activation energies. Ten years later, Evans and Polanyi put forward similar concepts. So let's consider this bronsted evans polanyi relationship on a reaction coordinate diagram. So here let's say we're looking at the dissociative adsorption of A2 to form 2A star. So what the bronsted evans polanyi principle, or BEP relationship, tells us is that if we do something to stabilize the product state here, the transition state will be stabilized by some related quantity. So essentially since the transition state has some molecular resemblance to the final state, it will respond to changes in reaction energy or in this case, the energy of the adsorbed product state. So if we consider a small enough range of adsorption energies, this relationship will be linear. So we can write that changes in the activation energy will be a linear function of changes in the reaction energy plus some constant V. The magnitude of the slope of this BEP relationship reflects how much the transition state resembles the product state versus the reactant state. A slope close to one implies the transition state is very similar to the product state, so its energy changes just like the product. So combining these transition state and reaction energy scaling relations allows us to describe rates in terms of often a single variable. So initially we had a rate equation which was a function of activation energies or reaction energies for each of our elementary steps, but now through the BEP relations we can write that the activation energies are some linear function of a descriptor, and through our linear scaling relations we can write the reaction energies for our different elementary steps as a function, again, of a descriptor. So in essence, what we've done is greatly simplify the problem of describing our rate quantitatively by mapping a function of many energetic variables onto just one energetic descriptor. In subsequent videos, we'll see some examples of how this works and how it can give us intuition about what limits catalytic rates and how we can design more efficient catalysts.